Out of the ashes of the Second World War, the European project sought to promote peace, trust and cooperation between peoples and nations. Robert Schumann, a founding father, dreamt of uniting the people of Europe in post-war reconciliation. But 60 years on, that reconciliation project is threatened. In the last decade, the continent of Europe has faced severe and unexpected challenges, economically, socially and politically. In the light of these pressures, the European Union has had to question its aims and direction. Critics point to excessive bureaucracy and a growing gap between politicians and citizens. At this time of fundamental re-evaluation over the future of Europe, how should the churches react? The Conference of European Churches has set about grappling with this issue. In 2016, the governing board issued an open letter calling for globally coordinated solutions to global problems. This was backed up in 2017 by a series of consultations across its membership in four regions. These regional consultations were supplemented by national discussions and written submissions. One way or another, most of the 113 member churches made a contribution. The process itself was as important as any theme addressed in the discussion. It demonstrated a readiness to listen and respect a specific concern, a key ecumenical value. From the start, the very configuration of the regions made clear that Europe is not synonymous with the European Union. Neither is it narrowly defined by geography or any other political concept or institution. Rather, for the churches, Europe relates to culture, a common history and shared sources of identity. Having listened to its members, what were the main themes that came out of these consultations? Not surprisingly, many concerns were specific to a region while others were shared across the whole membership. The Nordic-Baltic consultation focused on strengthening the Church's engagement with society, the UK and Ireland on healing wounds after Brexit, the South on growing Euroscepticism, economic hardship and migration, while Central and Eastern Europe revolved around secularism and the rising appeal of ethnic and national identities. Respectful of the region's differences, let's review highlights from the four consultations, one by one. Starting in Reykjavik, in non-EU member state, Iceland. The Nordic-Baltic consultation called for a strengthening of the church's engagement with society, including with those outside the church. As part of their dialogue with politics, Delegates called for the churches to be more forceful in pointing out injustice whenever and wherever it occurs. In the words of Archbishop Emeritus Anders Verut of the Church of Sweden, through faith the churches should dare to think that the weak should be protected, wealth shared, the refugee welcomed and the world stewarded. And what lies behind this commitment to justice and respect for the other? According to Archbishop Verud, the person of Jesus Christ has to be made known, lifted up and repeatedly invoked in our contemporary societies. That is the task of churches. Turning to the West, the consultation in Edinburgh brought together churches from the United Kingdom and Ireland in the aftermath of the UK's decision to leave the European Union. Discussion of imminent secession revealed deep disappointments that resonate across the region's churches and society. Beyond Brexit, the churches discussed how they should react to political issues and people's concerns, how they should strengthen their work for the common good, how they should talk about their dear Colonel ministry, and how they should approach those who have pushed the margins of society. 
now moving south to Volos in Greece. The consultation for the churches in the south brought together delegates from all over this extensive region, from Portugal in the west, through Spain, Italy, the Balkans, and as far as Armenia in the east. Two themes dominated, how to create a dialogue over the role of the European Union and how best to help those in need. The region is rife with Euroscepticism, which is exacerbated by poverty in the wake of economic crises. Countries in the Balkans are particularly challenged by their relationship with the European Union. In some cases, there is a tension in values, both for those states that are already members and those striving to become such. On the subject of poverty, churches in Greece were acknowledged for having demonstrated solidarity and hospitality in providing assistance to those in need, victims of economic crises, as well as refugees. But there were still misgivings. Metropolitan Ignatius of the Greek Orthodox Church pointed out that the proximity to power has prevented the church from sufficiently distancing itself from populism and corruption, and so is less able to criticize the direction of economic policy. There were calls to limit the power of the market and to redress economic injustice. In particular, delegates called for a fairer distribution of profits and pointed to the social cost of market operations. Alloyed to these economic strains, the region of the South is confronting influxes of refugees. The members here asked to what extent the churches should supplant the role of the state in providing assistance. The participants stressed that the church exists in multi-religious and multicultural contexts. Given the plurality, the commitment to interfaith dialogue and cross-cultural communication is indispensable. Finally, to Prague, with its rich cosmopolitan history and a region that has witnessed the re-emergence of ethnic and national identities. Many of these countries represented are still overcoming the legacy of their totalitarian past. Mindful of having lived through a different system, the members look for a respectful dialogue with the West, not simple integration. Churches in Central and Eastern Europe have been vocal in protesting against the building of walls between people and against corruption in all forms. To do this effectively, the churches are trying to make Christianity more visible. They want to see a public theology in which churches are part of an open society and back up their beliefs with concrete actions. Members stressed, however, that the church has to go beyond seeing secularism as an enemy and more as a partner. Having listened to the consultations, what did we learn from this process? First, that the regions are a source of richness and secondly, that the consultations were a forum for exchange that is a model for ecumenical collaboration. The consultation process itself underlined the importance of having a presence in the regions, as it facilitates a forum for listening to problems that need to be addressed at a level beyond the region. In deliberating the future of the continent, the consultations underlined that ecumenical cooperation and respect among the churches is not only an intra-church experience, it's central to the church's contribution to building fellowship in Europe. What were the main conclusions from the consultations? Across the continent, the churches want to be active in Europe's society. They believe there's a space for a church that raises concerns over present day issues from the increasing gap between rich and poor, for example, to the deteriorating work-life balance, the exploitation of the environment, to the effects of new technology. The consultations show there's a need for a church that listens to the voice of the dispossessed, that speaks for justice and unity, and that does not talk in terms of internal market, but rather encourages the duty of solidarity.
leading to fairer sharing. Based on the consultation's conclusions, how best to support Europe at this critical crossroads? To underpin their participation, the Church is united in recommending a qualified theology made up of three key actions. Building a fellowship, or koinonia in classical biblical language. Offering a service to people and the world around, or diakonia. And bearing witness in society, martyria. These goals in themselves promote ecumenical relations that in turn are based on solidarity, justice and respect for one another, as well as for the world around us. Reasons to be hopeful as we survey the continent at this troubled time.